All right, I'm going to continue talking about our tail flick analgesic circuitry. Um, this is the prototype that I showed in a previous video where I have a photo transistor here, uh, NPN type, and here's an LED that uh, is currently acting like the hot lamp that we would use to uh, test analgesic effects in rodents. Um, so just to show you that this is functioning, I'm going to go into my Arduino serial monitor. I already have the software loaded onto my Arduino, and it's running. Uh, it's even initialized in the serial monitor, so I can just type Y. If I cover my photo transistor and hit enter, the LED will light up. And when light is sensed, it turns that off. That would be the equivalent of turning the heat lamp off, and it tells me how long it took um, for the tail to flick out of the way after the light came on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is replace the LED with a light bulb that's in, this is a ceramic mount. You can use plastic if you want. Um, I believe that's what we used in the paper uh, that's in the Journal of Undergraduate Neuroscience Education. I'm going to use a regular 40 watt light bulb here um, just because it's a little smaller. Um, for the heat lamp, we're actually using a 100 watt halogen light. It's a floodlight. Um, one thing to be aware of is that the relay that we're using here, this uh, G5V 1 by Omron, is really only rated for about 60 watts. Um, so Something to keep in mind, um, if you plug a 100 watt light bulb into it, it's possible that that could uh, end up crying. Um, you may want to replace it with a higher wattage um, relay or stick with something that's 60 watts or less for your flood lamp. Okay, so we're going to connect this instead of this. The things you're going to need are a screwdriver, uh, we also have what they call a lamp cord that you can buy at a hardware store. On one end it has the electrical plug that you plug into an outlet and on the other side it just has two exposed wires. And what we do is we just take one of the exposed wires uh, and connect it to the light here. We can connect it to either one of these. The light doesn't care. Um, in most electrical situations, you want to be aware of your hot wire and your common wire. Um, but this isn't a polarized device, so it doesn't matter. These are actually color-coded. One's more of a copper color and one's more of a silver color, uh, if you do want to keep that straight. Um, but with my lamp cord, because it doesn't have a polarized plug with a larger side, um, I don't know which side's what, so I'm not going to worry about it. One thing I should say is that I use the LED for prototyping because once you start playing with the electricity from the wall, it gets yourself into a pretty dangerous situation. Um, so it's a really good idea to prototype with this where you can't hurt yourself. Um, and then once you start to deal with the electricity from an outlet, you want to be extremely careful making these connections. Um, always keep it unplugged until you're ready to test everything and your hands aren't connected to any of it. Okay, so I'm just going to take this exposed wire and um, wrap it onto one of these screws. And my screwdriver for tightening it. So I now have one wire connected here. The other connection, I'm not going to make permanent connections here. Um, so I'm going to use alligator clip wires. Um, what you would want to do is use actual wire that you can connect here and then solder to the circuitry here. Um, so anywhere I have an alligator clip, um, consider that to be temporary, whereas you'll want to make something more permanent. Okay, so I have one end of the lamp cord and then an alligator clip. I'm going to put this on a plastic box just to isolate it from my desktop. It's a wooden desktop, but just to be extra safe. Um, 
Next, I'm going to take the green alligator clip that I put on to the light. Um, I'm going to plug that in to... I'm going to take this LED out and the side of it that is going to the row 11 on the breadboard, I'm going to connect this green wire. So I'm thinking of that as my ground wire. I'm going to then take a yellow alligator clip that I'm thinking of as my hot wire, even though, again, I haven't made any distinction uh, with my lamp cord, which one is hot and which one is common. So um, there's technically not any difference. It's just so that I can keep my color code in here. Um, the whole thing will be hot once the light is plugged in, so you don't want to touch any of the wires. You want to make sure that you make connections that don't have exposed wire. Okay, and then this yellow is going to replace the yellow one that was connected to the row 15 of the relay here. So I'm going to take that wire out, um, but then I'm going to plug it back into row 15 here so that I can connect my alligator clip to row 15. There's no way for me to connect alligator clips to the breadboard without a wire sticking out like this. And again, I'm trying to make sure that uh, everything is covered. I don't want anything exposed that has the 120 volts coming out of the wall. And for a 40 watt, watt light bulb, um, that's going to be a quarter of an amp or something. You don't want that. Uh, you don't want to expose yourself to that. Okay, so everything is connected now. Um, I can plug into the wall, which I'm going to do. And then I can go into my serial monitor. And everything is running. I'm going to cover the photo sensor here, type Y. The light turns on, and when I expose the photo sensor, the light turns off, and I get the time it took for that to happen. Just to verify that it truly is working, I'm going to cover it again. Type Y and enter. I get light, and when I remove my hand from the photo sensor, it turns off again. So everything is working. Uh, that's how you connect it. I hope that's helpful to actually see all of those connections. Um, let me know if you have any questions either through YouTube or you can contact me through the link that's on YouTube. Um, that'll go to my website and my contact information is there. Uh, hope it helps again and good luck.